Hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. Today I am in beautiful blustery Fort Smith, Montana to film a gorgeous 1988 Chevy Suburban. This thing gets about four miles per gallon going downhill with the engine cut off, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, I know nothing about this vehicle. I'm actually at a camp right now, and they told me, hey Brock, if you wanna drive this beast, go for it, you can, go thrash it. So I said, I cannot resist. So in this video, we're gonna do a quick walk around, and as you can tell right now, we're actually having about 50 mile per hour crosswinds. And uh, so this is absolutely prime, perfect conditions for shooting a video. Uh, so we're going to do a quick walk around. We're going to take a look at the back, at the front. We're going to end up in the driver's seat where I'll show you all the features. <laughs> Everything is analog, so it's absolutely perfect. Then we're going to take it for a drive, and she is absolutely picture perfect, buttery smooth on the road. So let's strap on and take a ride in 50 mile an hour Montana crosswinds in a big old Chevy Suburban sitting on gigantic Mick, Mickey Thompson rubber. All right, starting with the outside, everything is a box. This thing is a gigantic block of cheese on huge Mickey Thompson tires. And I love everything about this. In fact, you can actually tell if you look at the brand new Lexus GX 550 right now, it's going back to this real boxy look. A G-Wagon, they all stole it from this. No, I'm just kidding, but everything is boxy. So this is a 1988 model and everybody's like, yeah, we wanna go back to that cool look. And of course this thing is four wheel drive. You, you can't have anything but four wheel drive out here in Montana. Uh, you've got your Silverado 20 badge here on the side. You got your great big side steps right here, and if you don't use these, you will destroy your shins. I found that out the hard way. Uh, over here, you've got a neat feature that we're gonna take a look at on the side view mirror right there in just a second. I'll show you what that looks like here also. Uh, coming around here to the back of the vehicle, you have two doors that open up. The handle is on the right-hand door, and I'm, I've got it parked in the direction to where I hope the wind will actually keep the doors open. This one's open. There's a little latch down here, a little lever. You gotta pop open, throw this door open, and then here is your, behind your rear third row seat. This has a ton of fantastic room in the back. The third seat is folded up in the up position. So with the third seat in position, that's gonna be your maximum cargo space. There's your second row. It's got a 60-40 a, uh, split there uh, and it's, carpet from wall to wall. You either have Naga hide or carpet, and that's the fantastic, <laughs> I just absolutely love that on this thing. Right here is gonna be your gas tank. It's gonna be on the right side. Um, it has a 438 gallon gas tank, and like I said, it gets four miles per gallon. So, uh, but don't worry about that. You know, you're not worried about gas in this thing. You're just worried about having fun and actually not breaking your neck because the suspension on this thing is uh, absolutely crucial. Uh, you'll see when we go to drive this thing. All right, now I'm actually gonna pop the hood and uh, I wanna show you a cool feature when you pop the hood on this thing, how you actually have to get the hood up because it's a two-step process. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so in order to pop the hood, like I said, it's a two-step process. So you've got a lever here and it says hood. And when you pull it, you can hear it pop just like any other vehicle. But whenever you come around to the front and you can see that the hood is actually off kilter a little bit, but nothing actually happens. See, like a normal vehicle, there's no latch. So I'm gonna show you the second step in this process in order to pop the hood so we can take a quick look at the beast underneath. Into this thing again, you gotta use your side steps. Otherwise, you'll kill your leg. And then here's the key. So, you know, in all my videos, I like to show you guys all the new and latest, greatest technology as far as smart keys are concerned. And a lot of them are just these little, you know, things you carry on you and you hit a button on the inside. Well, this, everything like I've said all along is fully analog. So you actually have to stick it into the column. Foot on the brake. Oh, and she fires right up. Listen to that purr, isn't that beautiful? Now, keep in mind, Right now, we're focusing on trying to open the hood. And as I said, it's a two-step process. Brake release. And so now, here we go. So in order to open the hood, I've gotta go 
and hit a couple of bumps. Now you can see the hood is still in the down position, but watch as soon as I hit a bump. Oh, she didn't go up. Hold on. Come on, baby. See, you kinda, <laughs> you kinda have to talk to it too. There's a gigantic bump up here. There it is. There we go. Okay, so now the hood has been popped. Isn't that a, isn't that a great feature? So now uh, I'm gonna hop out and we're gonna take a look around the engine and see what this baby looks like. So as you can see here now, the hood is popped. You gotta reach in. Stand by. Stand by. I was holding my tongue to the right. You gotta hold your tongue to the left. There we go. And you notice you don't have any silly little prop rods. You just got these big, beautiful springs right here. And now this is the heart of the beast that makes this thing go. I know nothing about this engine. I don't know how much horsepower it has, how much torque it has, the compression ratio, none of that. I'll, go, I'll put that in the, uh, in the video. I'll overlay that for you over what I'm saying right now. But uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at what this beautiful thing looks like. Notice down here you have a big silver pipe that just goes nowhere. Uh, I think that's probably why it runs so well, uh, just because it's it's not connected to anything. Uh, there's your battery and there's some other stuff, and it's uh, nice and dirty. This is actually what a good suburban engine is supposed to look like. I think this is kind of by design. This is a Montana engine. In order to close the hood, here's what we have to do. You actually have to kind of get a running start. And now, there's your engine. <laughs> I've driven this thing only a couple of miles. The first time I drove it, uh, the, the, the factory feature of the check engine light came on. It's not cutting on right now, and, and something must be wrong with it because the check engine light's not on. Uh, but that's okay. Hey, hopefully it will come on, and then we'll, we know we're smooth sailing. Uh, so right now we're on a gravel road, and it's got just, just bad divots all over the place. And so we're gonna be able to really utilize the horrible suspension in this thing and, and kind of know what it, what it actually drives like. We slam it down <laughs> into drive. <laughs> I w you know, I wish y'all could be here with me because this thing is absolutely ridiculously awesome. It, it drives the way it's supposed to. It, because, you know, taking in the, the terrain, it's just doing right now what it's supposed to do. It's driving like a big, fat, gigantic, all-American piece of machinery that is just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> hey, there's also plenty of headroom. And you know, you actually, that's a necessity. Uh, otherwise, you would fracture your skull because <laughs> I think I'm hitting my head right here. Also, take a look at this, uh, I call this the, the drop ceiling, you see that? It's nice and wavy. And that, that kind of gives it a nice, you know, romantic look, kind of like a waterbed. Uh, it, the ceiling is also perforated. You know, a lot of seats in the cars that I shoot have uh, heated and air-conditioned seats. Chevy is thinking really out of the box here and they perforated their ceiling, so that's really nice. Also, you have this really sweet uh, woolish type dash thing. Uh, I really enjoy that. That's a, that's a nice feature as well. So now we're gonna get out here on the road. I want you to listen to these shift points. We're in first, here comes second, and it's gonna pop for us real good. Yeah, there's second. You hear the whistling? That's a great feature. I love the whistling here. Here comes third. Third. Here comes third. Or, or not, we're gonna just stay in second for a while. I think right now we're getting negative miles per gallon. I'd say, okay, I can, I think I can actually literally see the fuel gauge moving. It's moving about as much as the speedometer is. And the check engine light is still not on, which has me a little concerned. And if, if you've ever been out west or out to a place like this and you've driven in winds like this, you know, essentially right now we're driving a sail. And it's really picking up the wind really nicely. And it's blowing us all over the road. It's a good thing there's literally nobody for about 100 miles. Uh, otherwise, we'd probably be slamming into cars and this would be a crash derby right now. So, 
Needless to say, I absolutely love everything about this vehicle. And we're going 55 and we still haven't felt like a, feels like we still haven't shifted into third, I don't know. We're probably running at about 4,500 RPM. I don't know, because there's not a tack. I think that's a park ranger, so I'm gonna mind my business. Well, actually out here, uh, an another beautiful thing about Montana, by the way, is uh, the speed limit is generally about 80, unless it's otherwise posted. So if you're not doing at least about 85, 90, people are eating your lunch. I wanna point your attention too, to the passenger side mirror. That is a uh, absolutely a fantastic feature. Uh, it has a super loose and wavy mirror. So if you wanna look outside the, uh, if you wanna look you know, outside your line of sight on the passenger side, you literally have to do this in order to uh, kind of understand <laughs> your reflection there in the mirror. Check this out. There you go. And this says bump right here. So we're, of course we're gonna speed up. Uh, that's not a bump. And there you're, there you're getting the wind also. And you know, the cabin noise in this thing is absolutely perfect. It's, you, don't, you don't have to yell at each other or anything. It's, it's just really nice. We're coming up to the Bighorn Canyon near the Yellowtail Dam right now, because we're actually on the Bighorn River. And this is a actually beautiful country. Uh, it's, it's, it's God's country. It's absolutely amazing. So right here, we're gonna pull in here and kind of turn around. And uh, I think the turning radius on this thing is about 348 feet. Let's see this. I think we're gonna have to do a 17 point road turn here. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, by the, <laughs> by, by the way, you have to apply about 180 pounds of pressure on the, uh, on the brake in order to stop this thing. Yeah, I, 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 that, the reason I say that is because I weigh about 190 pounds and uh, I just about put all my body weight on it because we were about to go into a ditch and this would have been a whole different video. Uh, this, it would have been a rescue video instead of this. Be beautiful, perfect video we're putting together for you right now. All right, so uh, that was only a three point road turn. That's kind of disappointing there. I was hoping to get at least four or five. Uh, so yeah, in, in summary, uh, the 1988, Chevy Suburban is an absolute masterpiece of awesomeness. It's actually a prerequisite kind of for living out here. You have to have something that nine times out of 10 is gonna have the check engine light on, is gonna ride really rough like a carriage, like a horse, and, uh, and but is gonna have a reliable four wheel drive system. So when you need it, you got it. And uh, you know, this is one of those vehicles, in all seriousness, this is one of those vehicles, especially when it's on this lift kit and it's got these gigantic Mickey Thompson teeth on it, that you you do a double take and you're like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is the this is the truck I want. Um, but and, and, and you know, it's so funny when I pulled up to this to this place that I'm staying for the week, it's like I've just been drawn like a moth to the flame to this thing and I can't take my eyes off of it. And I asked the guys that are running this camp, hey, you think I can take the beast out? And they're like, absolutely, threw me the keys and said, hey, go have fun. So I figured I would bring this premier vehicle to my YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure. It, and, and it's just an awesome experience, especially driving it in this rugged, blustery weather. It's, it's just so perfect. It's just like God made this weather and all of this just for me today so that I can bring you this high quality video. But that's just about gonna do it for uh, our look at the 1988 Chevy Suburban with a giant lift kit on it. So thank you so much for watching this video. I wanna take the opportunity to say a great big thank you to The Refuge in Fort Smith, Montana for the opportunity to film this video. I'll be sure to leave all their contact information including their website in the description box below. But remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.